Hi folks. I'm in the gallery of our new store in Wares Valley. It's a big expansive building that is uh, full of our pots. It's the same inventory that we have at our Glades Road location in Gatlinburg, but we have opened this to give the people on this end of the county access to our, our pots in an easier amount of time. You don't have to drive for so long. I've got a potter work, working out here. Uh, we've got uh, plenty of inventory for you to look at. We have other vendors that we're showcasing now, along with our pots that you'll enjoy. And uh, I'd like for you to come out and see us. There's plenty to do out here. Ware's Valley is such a pretty place. And they've got restaurants out here, and the, the view is majestic of the mountains. So, while you're here in our beautiful Smoky Mountains, I'd like to invite you to come out to our Ware's Valley store. We have many things you can do out here. We've got the Foothills Parkway. Uh, we've got Cage Cove. We've got Townsend on the way. We're open Monday through Saturday from 10 till 6. We close on Sundays. And I'd like for you to come out and see us. We have a big, beautiful store here, as you've seen. And we're really proud of it. So come give us a look. Have a great day. of animals that the Great Smoky Mountains National Park would be particularly famous for, it would be its salamanders. Here we have about 26 species of salamanders, whereas in some of your western parks, especially in the southwest, they may have one or two or three. But here, of course, we have climatic conditions and uh, vegetation conditions which make this possible. And our salamanders range from a little critter up on the top of our highest mountains that is only an inch and a half long when it's fully mature to the giant hellbender in the lower streams, a specimen of which we've collected that was 29 and a half inches long. That happened to be a record specimen hellbender. And in between, there are a number of salamanders, most of them in the range of three to five inches long, and one that occurs nowhere else. If we were to go to a place like Indian Gap, a mile and a half west of Newfound Gap, and turned over a half a dozen rocks, the chances are very good that we would find the red-cheeked salamander. Some scientists call it the Jordan's salamander. This animal is about three to three and a half inches long when full grown, is uh, mostly black, except the cheeks are an orange or red color. Now, this particular salamander, as I said before, occurs nowhere else. and. Uh, that's rather unusual for a salamander to have such a limited range. These salamanders, of course, are amphibians. They're related to frogs and toads. They lay their eggs either in the water or in very moist places. And uh, their time of activity is largely in uh, late winter and early spring. Some of our salamanders, like the so-called newt, N-E-W-T, may lay eggs as early as January in the low quiet water. All right, this is the glazing department. And uh, what you're gonna see here are mostly just 
raw chemicals mixed up in water, and that's how we get all of our glazes. Um, as you can tell here, we have quite a few of them. Um, stony, red gold. Um, actually, I need to probably open these for you. That's where you can kind of see them a little better. There we go. So they all kind of look a little different in this form, in the wet form. Um, they're not all going to come out this way after they're fired. So stony, we got red gold. Uh, this is our classic white. Um, one of our more interesting glazes, lady blue. Um, we use this one a lot to top other glazes. So a lot of layering is involved with this one, but it highlights a lot of the other glazes very well. Uh, we got green right here, which is one of the few that actually looks like the color it turns out to. Uh, black, same way, it's pretty black. Uh, red, which is actually white. So you'd never guess that that would be red when it's fired. Um, yellow. We have what do we call Miami, which is our light blue color. Um, it can range from a dark blue jean color to a very like sky blue type of color, depending on the thickness and the firing and all that sort of stuff. And then this is our Timiku, which is one of my personal favorites. It's a very old glaze. Um, probably say, you know, it comes from a Japanese background. It's a very old glaze, but beautiful looks great over everything it layers well and one of my personal favorites so that's the gist of all of them um, that we use here and they're all high fire glazes so we fire uh, to cone 10 reduction um, and most of our clay is all stoneware so all right um, this is what what I get from the process this is our this is just a leaf mug and it has a wax resist over the leaf to where when I glaze it that that bare clay will be exposed and then you can still see the leaf veins. Um, so uh, basically what I do is called a pour and pop method. So that's why you see these 20 gallon buckets of glaze. Um, I'm basically just gonna pop the bottom in a color, come back and pour it with a mixing cup and then that's how I get the glaze on the inside. So we'll start out and we'll probably do, we'll do some classic white. It's easy to do. All right, now the fun part is I get to use a drill. <laughs> All right, now there's two ways I could go about doing this. These are one of the most useful tools uh, in the glazing room. Uh, these are just some tongs, is what we call them. Uh, this is another type of glazing tool that I use. But it just makes it to where I don't have to touch the pot, and I can get it on the board without really any marks or anything. So, I'm just going to take it, dip it all the way down, give a little count, and the fun part of shaking it all off. Now you can see it. I shook some of it off and some of it's still on there, but once it dries, we'll be able to come back with a sponge just like this and we'll wipe the rest of that glaze off the leaf. And then there you go. I'll show another one to you. Pretty good arm workout. <laughs> there we go. Now uh, let's try to do some different colors. Now this one, I'm going to go to my favorite, Timiku. Now this one's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to layer a color on first and then I'm going to come back and base the whole thing just like I kind of did these. So that way you get two different colors. A lot of shaking, always shaking. I'll do one more in this color. Alright, as you can tell they all kind of have a different rate of drying, 
some colors are going to dry a little bit different. Just kind of depends on the thickness of the glaze itself. Um, so now, the fun part, we get to mix up another glaze. We're going to go this one with the yellow. Grab my trusty tongs. Hmm. As you can see, the yellow, the wax repels a lot better off of it, and that just has to do with the thickness of the glaze. Voila. And each glaze, uh, they all have their own separate count. And the count just means how long I hold the pot in the glaze. And that'll determine the actual color and how it turns out and everything like that. So the color at the top, how's that? It burns back through and... Yeah, you'll just be able to see this color underneath because of the layering. So because I put this one on first um, and then put the yellow over it, this part will turn out this is a, a color we've had for a long time called Smoky Mountain Sunshine. So that's one of our more popular colors. Um, we also do it in our dinnerware and things like that. I'm trying to hold it a little bit longer on just the bare clay to where it soaks in better there. Because with layering, um, it can be too thick for sure sometimes. So you gotta be real careful whenever you're putting multiple colors on the same pot. This is what we use, just canning wax for the bottom of the pot, but each pot it's going to sit on a kiln, so I have to make sure that the bottom isn't glazed because otherwise it would stick to the kiln shelf. So we just use your average canning wax, put it in there like that, give it a few little shakes, and now the bottom's waxed. So now I don't have to worry about glaze getting on the bottom and me having to sit here and wipe it off with a sponge or anything like mm -hmm. that. So. All right, we'll do good mountain color because I know we'll probably have one of these in that colorway out there. And this is our red. Mountain is uh, a red base, and then I layer it with Miami, and then I'll pop it in either yellow or lady blue, um, white, black, things like that. There's all sorts of different options with it. This is definitely one of our more thick glazes, but it requires a high um, count to it. So I'll have to hold it in there for quite a while. Just kind of shaking it around to make sure it gets an even line all the way around it. Try to shake it as much as I can. There we go, first layer done. Now we gotta wait on that to dry and then I'll be able to come back, pour the inside with glaze and bring that down over it. And this I'm just trying to wipe off all that extra glaze while it's wet over the leaf, but not wet on the pot itself. As you can see, it wipes mm. off pretty easily. There we go. All right, hopefully I have enough Miami to dip that long handle in there. <laughs> I didn't think about that. 
Just use your average measuring cup. All right. Shake it off a little bit. Now I'm just trying to glaze the inside of the pot. So I'll pour all that in there. Shake it around a little bit. And then pour it out as slow as I can. Make sure I get all the inside. Now I'm going to count this, get a nice cross, and there we go. Hmm. And that one's finished. Is everything um, you'll do to it or will you do I'll that? have to pop one more time just on the top. and. Um, Here's where you can kind of start getting creative. Um, normally, I'll pop it in lady blue, but I mean, you can pick, have your choice just about of any glaze and pop it in another color and it'll look completely different. Um, another one we do a lot of is the yellow and the black over it. Those two combinations are very popular. But the... so there you go. Mm -hmm. Brand new. <laughs> and then I can go ahead and put the last color on the top of it so it's ready to go. And that one I'll do lady blue just because it's classic. There we go. Mm. I'll just gotta let it dry and then we'll be ready to fire. Okay. All right, so these are after they've been fired. These were the two colors that I was working on. This is your classic white right here. This is what it looks like after it's been fired. How do those speck, black specks get in there? Um, that's the glaze itself. It really does that. Too. Yep, yep. We can kind of be vanilla bean-ish in that way. If it's thinner, then that's the way it comes out. Uh, Is the, that something you put in the glaze to make uh, that happen? Um, no, that's just one of the raw materials that's in the glaze itself that comes out like that. Um, it could also be, depending on what type of clay that you use, some of that will come out through the clay as well. Um, but here's the other color. This is our Smoky Mountain Sunshine. So you can kind of see the two different layers. And then obviously you see the bare clay through the leaf. So here we got our red base that you see here. And this one turned out exceptionally well, in my opinion, because you get all of this darker tones to it, which is pretty rare. So see all these dark red tones? And sometimes we refer to that as ox blood when it comes out like that. Um, but this is our blue, and then I've popped it in lady blue. So that's how you kind of get this waterfall effect to it. And then this purple color comes from the blue over the red. So you get a nice purple band right in the middle. And that's our classic mountain color. This is a sprayed plate. So I've Based it in red, that's your red base. And then I've sprayed two different colors over that. I started with the Miami, so that's how you kind of get the purple. And then I layered it with lady blue as well. And that's how you get all those really electric blue colors. But this would be nearly impossible to do with the pouring technique. So it has to be done with a spray gun. And then this is another technique that I do. Uh, this is an actual, I can do this poured. 
So this is three different colors, and then this is what you get when you blend the three colors together. So and it's kind of difficult to find three colors that complement each other well. So these are can be very time consuming, but they're gorgeous when they turn out. <laughs> All right, and... Uh, What's the story on that one? Did you get a little murderous up there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, you see this a lot of with Robert's older stuff. Um, we'll take, we'll base it one color, and then we'll take a brush and dip it in colors and then really just splatter it with it. Mm -hmm. So it's a unique, unique blend of colors together, but I really like that one. It reminds me of the older stuff. <laughs> uh, this is actually something new. This is a wax resist, so we'll it's a coaster and we painted a tree with wax and then I base it and pop it in another color and that's how you get that bare clay tree right there. Mm. So just a little something different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, these are some of my favorite colors. You get your classic Timiku base and then this is our lady blue on itself actually. just It's lady blue layered on itself. And it's one of our prettier combinations in my opinion. Um, this is you know red with the mountain at the top as well. This is stony. It's mostly used as a base. And then when, this is a color we call stormy, which is a layer of three different colors. It's Timiku, our Miami, and then Lady Blue. And to me, it kind of just looks like a storm in the sky. Mm -hmm. So that's where that one came from. Uh, this is our red gold. And that's a very earth tone color, but it's gorgeous. Um, and then we have blue, um, our Miami with lady blue over top of it. This uh, definitely is the definition of fall in my opinion. <laughs> now this one, uh, it starts off as a normal pot and then uh, Katie cuts the top off in a pattern and then draws this pattern into the clay. And then that's what it really get it really highlights the glaze and makes the glaze look pretty. And the colors you have going on there. I've got a red red base on the bottom, and then this is your uh, Miami with lady blue over it. But I put lady blue on the inside, and it's very pretty by itself. So this is your typical mountain, but it just you know it looks different on depending on the type of pot that you put it on. So, but one of the more gorgeous pots we got in the shop. <laughs> And this is one of our uh, cabin cutout series, and this one has a red base, and then I've put Timiku on it, then yellow, and then I put red back over that. And those three colors blend very well. Mm -hmm. You get and all sorts of different colors and, and effects. The cutouts. the cutouts are done by my fiance, Katie, and she hand, hand draws all these and cuts them out herself, the uh, most stencil needed. So, all done by hand. <laughs> and this one's red base, and then um, the Miami over the top with Lady Blue, and then that nice purple band on it. And this one's a beautiful church. She's done. Get a lot of purple and dark, dark reds in there. Dixie 
on the Dixie B line. Going to rise and shine, I'm going to stay up to time. Rise and shine, going to keep up the time when I ride in that in real mine. Henry Ford wants the muscle shows to bring to the people of the South pure gold. Let him have it, says, oh my Lord, my Lord ride him on a Henry Ford. On the Dixie, on the Dixie Bee line, going to rise and shine, I'm going to stay up to time. Rise and shine, going to stay up to time when I ride in that in real fine. That old Buick said she treated me mean Took all my money for to buy gasoline She may be warm, but I don't know But a Buick won't come where the Henry will go On the Dixie, on the Dixie B line Going to rise and shine, going to stay up to time Rise and shine, going to keep up the time When I ride in that in real fine Went to the mountain for to get some booze. The Henry Ford car was the one I choose. The officers got right on me, I say. I pulled a wide open and made my get away. On the Dixie, on the Dixie B line. Going to rise and shine, I'm going to stay up to time. Rise and shine, going to stay up to time. When I ride in that Henry Hill man. Everybody knows the Henry Ford car. Everybody knows they're the best they are. If you want to take a ride, just get in the Ford and sit another time. Says, oh, my Lord, on the Dixie, on the Dixie B line, going to rise and shine, going to stay up the time. Rise and shine, going to stay up the time. When I ride in that in real fine. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and First Lady Eleanor visited East Tennessee during the 1930s and officially dedicated the park on September 2, 1940. Tune in to the Alewine Pottery Channel 196. Watch local craftsmen and learn of the rich Smoky Mountain heritage and history. Meet Robert Alewine and his family as they take you on their journey of their successful pottery business in the Gatlinburg's arts and crafts community. Established by Robert Alewine more than 30 years ago, this business has grown up with the Alewine family. Alewine Pottery is renowned nationwide, not only for their stunning handmade ceramics, but also their friendly, fun-loving family atmosphere. Tune to Channel 196, the Alewine Pottery Channel, and enjoy these great stories. <laughs>